Hi guys, um, right, so can you let me know if you can hear me, if you can see me, I'm starting a little bit early, I'm letting people come in, um, so yeah, so who have we got, hi Joanne, um, hi Michelle, oh hi, hi Emma, what are you making, hi guys. <laughs> oh let me turn this down, alright, hi Princess, thank you Princess, Princess is my admin, um, she will basically, if there's any trolls, which will happen, um, she will basically come in and um, delete those, um, please tag her or whatever, um, yeah, basically, and then if there's any links that I need adding, Princess will add those as I go along. Right, so I'm Becky Alexander Frost, um, I own RGF Makes, and um, basically I like sorry <laughs> so um I'm basically going to be teaching you the keep it together bag and I'm going to do it in sections so the sections is um part one and part two it comes in two separate pattern pieces um two separate patterns part one is the outer bag which is this bag here and then part two is like these inner sleeve pieces now part um one I'm going to take step by step because I've had several, I mean several, people messaging me saying they've never made a bag before but they've brought the pattern and it's like, oh. So I'm going to take it a bit by bit each week. It's going to be about five weeks or so along for the both patterns, that's part one and part two, with no, no break for me. And then um, once that's finished, I will basically um, have a short break and then move on to the next pattern. So who else have we got? Uh, we've got some new people. Hi, new people. <laughs> right, okay, so I'm just going to leave it for a few more minutes and then I'm going to jump in. What's that? What did Emma say? Oh, we're both. Yeah, I love. These have come really big on me now. These are massive on me. But um, yeah, I love these. I, I live in Dungas. Princess will, t uh, will know. She's from my Fred's Gang, um, which is my online club, everybody. Um, she knows most lives I've got some form of dungas on. <laughs> you don't see dungas and you don't normally see my hair tied up on Sewing Street if you come from Sewing Street to watch me today. So if you are new to my channel, please give me a thumbs up if you like this video and if you like the contents and click the subscribe button. I'm not going to keep saying that. That's totally, totally up to you if you want to subscribe. Um, right, so Fred... <laughs> Fred <laughs> if if anybody says hi Fred and you're new to my channel um, I'm Fred and you'll understand this is a cotton spool but what is it actually known as and it's Fred <laughs> I can't say Fred properly so I'm nicknamed Fred <laughs> um, hi Fred look lovely as always oh thank you thank you Right, okay, so I'm going to jump into the overhead camera. If you have any questions, please don't hesitate to ask. And, um, yeah, I will basically answer any questions as I see them pop up. Right, where am I? Not that one. Not that one. This one. Right, okay, so I'm hoping you guys can see this. I'm hoping that camera hasn't moved. Uh, da -da. Just bear with me, um, I've had to rearrange the room a bit since I've had the um, the new frame brought in. Right, okay, got that. Right, okay, so we're working on part one today, so that's part one. I know it's the same front cover on part one and part two, um, but obviously it's only got part one. Part one is the actual outer bag that I'm actually doing today. Well, part of it. I'm only going to be making the front and the back today because I know some of them, some people out of viewing have never even put in a zip. So we're going to just tackle one zip today and get that out of the way for you. Um, and then it means that you guys can do it through the week and then move on to um, next week where I will be completing the bag. Right. Um, hi. Hi, Viola. Hi, Violet. Hi. Right, okay, right, so you've got to have some templates um, on a sheet, whether you've brought the um, PDF or the um, paper pattern. If you brought the PDF and you're printing out the actual just template sheet, there'll be a 
little square in the top hand corner make sure that measures um, one inch before you actually go ahead and um, cut these out if it doesn't measure one inch it means that you um, have got the corners at the wrong and your gusset won't fit so when I, we sew this part of the bag together and complete the bag together it means that it won't it won't fit so you need to actually make sure they're measures at one inch and um, hi bestie hi Laura go Laura Laura from Little Stitcher says I'm going to be using some of her fabric today and I'll point that out in a bit um, the first the first pattern is broken up into two sections you've got a red section and a blue section the red section is the main outer bag and then there's the blue section the blue section is at the back and it's this little extra pocket that you can actually make if you want to put your patterns in or that it basically velcros into the actual main outer bag so we are going to tackle this one on week three but the red section is the main section we're working on now the red section has its own what you will need and the blue section has what you will need in this one yeah this is um joanne this is how i actually work with fred gang um which is my online sewing club I actually break the patterns down in easier sections so it means that you can actually sew along with me each week if you want to or it just means that I'm not congesting people with so much information which I do find sometimes can be very very too much for me as dyslexic um, so I'm treating it as someone that's like me who's dyslexic or has um, autism so I like to break it down for people right so obviously i've got my little markings that's just for me for cutting out the red section between here is for the main outer bag and then the blue section is for that little extra page thing at the back i'm using fusible um interfacing so i'm using medium weight interfacing i'm using a woven interfacing it has to be a medium weight not too heavy but not too light so if you are stuck go over to my shop um, and just have a read of what my fuse it's all about and then you can get the concept if you are wanting to buy from someone else that is um, you can get the concept of what um, medium weight interfacing is you also need to use sew in foam now I'm using leftover bosal in our form and this is um, basically smooth on each side it's just the right about thickness however I don't sell this I sell um, Styreville sewing foam and that's rgfmix.com um, you can use either or we have to um, shrink it down anyway and we have to make it thinner um, when we are implementing the actual bag as well so the thickness will go right okay so the last thing is that you need to do is interface everything that it tells you to interface as you go along and then we will get into the construction get into the construction after you've interfaced everything now when I say interface everything it will basically have interfacing written on but likes of the binding don't interface it because it will get a bit too much um, and you won't be able to go around the corners and stuff like that if you brought the pattern back in last year you was a type O in the pattern um, if you brought the pattern recently in the last two three months that would have been corrected so you don't need to listen to this bit but where it says bias binding it says 10 by 2.2 uh, two and a quarter inches it actually should read 110 inches by two and a quarter there's a hundred inches missing off that 10 so basically just make a note of that if you've got one of the um, previous prints um, so you will find that um, it was from Sewing Street back in December last year onwards up until last month where the typo was changed I didn't notice that until someone actually pointed out 
Right, so I'm going to go straight into making the front outer slip pocket and the front zip pocket. <clears throat> the zips that I'm using, let me zoom out. There you go. Right, so the zips that I'm using are what I stock. Um, they're the stripy number five zips. I'm using the rainbow ones. The zip pulls are a mixture. I think these are from Country Cow. Um, designs and I've got my own one as well that I sell as well the fabric that I'm using is a mixture from myself so like the Moda Grunge that I'm using is from me um, from my shop and then the actual panels that I'm using and some of the interior fabrics are from Laura which is the little stitcher shows gosh that's how long since I bought the pack. Yeah, um, unfortunately, as most of my Fred Gang members know, that I had problems with all my um, software and my hardware. And unfortunately, I've not been able to do many Facebooks or, um, or actual YouTubes. So, right, okay, it's starting off with the front outer pocket. And then if I did this bag from start to finish on a YouTube live, it would take me about five hours. And I, I don't think people have got five hours. I personally haven't got five hours, especially when you've got kids. So um, it's best if we do this in sections. I'm going to tell you which pieces I've definitely got interfaced. So my bottom zip outer zip pocket pieces, the main outer front one, I've got... Um, fusible um, medium weight interfacing on I've used my woven fuse it um, actual interfacing and then for the lining I've used exactly the same it's interfacing on the wrong side both of these fabrics are from little stitcher size and then for the binding which is scraped grain that's from salvage to salvage I've used um, no interfacing on and what I have done is pressed it with starch and then I folded it in half like um, like so and then I opened it up and then brought the two long edges into the centre and given it a good press so that's my pocket binding and I've done that for the front and the back and then I've got my two top pieces so one's my lining with interfacing on and then I've got my main outer with interfacing on. Now if you do end up getting this panel, um, this is one section of the panel. I've actually just cut it where this measured the nine and a half inches up and ten inches wide. And then I had this little bit left over of the pa panel so I thought if I put the zip in between it means that that flower is carrying on just from there so that's the theory of mine anyway right so I'm going to get the nine inch zip that I recall and I've just trimmed it off with a pair of scissors now I'm going to singe the edges so basically it doesn't carry on fraying so just bear with me Now you should do this with a cup of water next to you or something, but I'm going to risk it. This will just stop it from fraying any further. Now if you don't like using a lighter, you can use a fray, ch um, fray check. I use a, um, a stove lighter because I can't grasp a normal lighter. I don't know how to use them. I've tried. Right, so you got four pieces of fabric that is told to cut out I've cut that out from the panel as well so I had a little bit left over from the panel this is so we can make some tabs now if you are new to installing zippers um, I have got a video on how to install a zipper um, pull on um, the YouTube channel right so on either end I'm going to pop um, the tab right side facing down and I'm going to clip into place 
So I've got my zipper pointing up at the moment. Flip that round and put another one on. And then I'm going to flip it over. So I've got the wrong side of the zipper showing up. And then I'm going to get these tabs. And this is right side, the dark blue. I'm going to pop that to the wrong side of the zipper. And sandwich that in between. So we've got like a little zipper sandwich going on here. Yeah, I'm I'm with you on that, Michelle. Um, I find them a lot easier and safer to use because as soon as my thumb comes off or finger comes off that little trigger button, the flame's gone. Okay, so I'm going to flip this over. And then I'm going to take this to my sewing machine. Now, on my sewing machine at the present moment, I've got my walking foot on and I've got a um, size... 9014 needle however when we get to the bit where we construct the full bag i'll be going over to a size 16 needle so that's a 1600 needle um i've just got a 9014 on because of the project that i was working on last night so using the seam allowance which the pattern recall uh, calls for is a quarter of an inch so i'm going to sew a quarter of an inch across here and reverse my stitch at the start and at the end of each one now i'm hoping i can get over to the sewing machine camera there you go right so it's a back view sewing machine um camera unfortunately we're moving around that's the only place i can put it at the moment so i've got my walking foot on my sewing machine so as you can see i've got a integrated walking foot i'm going to use the stitch length 2.4 and I'm using that seam allowance of a quarter of an inch and I'm going to sew reversing my stitch at the start and at the end I'm using the Elna Excellence 780 Plus um, it's got a nice throat space as you can see it's got quite a large throat space And my standard stitch length I'm using at the moment is a 2.4, but it depends on your sewing machine. Um, yours might be a number 3 or a number 2.5. Right, so I've done my two tabs and I'm going to bring them out and finger press them. And then I'm going to top stitch one eighth of an inch away from that edge. And I'm going to top stitch using a stitch length number 3. And I'm doing that about one eighth, or if you're not happy doing one eighth and not confident doing one eighth, do a quarter of an inch away. And as you can see, I'm sewing over that zipper really easily. And then I'm just going to repeat the same process on this side as well. So I've just opened it up, I'm going to give it a bit of a finger press. And then I'm going to top stitch one eighth of an inch away. And I'm not having to reverse my stitch because they're basically going to be locked in anyway in the next step. Alright, camera. Oh, no, you don't want that one. This one. No. <laughs> no. Oh, where's that camera gone? There. <laughs> so sorry, my husband normally does all this. He normally programs it all up for me and I do apologise. You're going to get that quite a lot. He's at work. <laughs> Oh. Right, I'm just cutting off any loose pieces of thread. See, I, I say I can't say that word. It's ironic because I work with it 24-7. Right, so work out which way you like the zip opening up on your bag. I like mine um, normally left to right. So I'm going to put my zip pull on the um, left side so I can open it up. I'm going to get my top, I mean my bottom panel, P 
piece let's move those up a bit there you go i'm going to get my panel piece and um i'm going to run quilters tape along this edge here guys you will go through a lot of this wash away double-sided sticky tape now wash away double-sided is ideal for sewing machines because it means it's not going to clog up the mechanism in your sewing machine you can get it from the likes of amazon and you can buy it quite bulk and um, you can buy four rolls for about nine pounds or three rolls also i don't ever put any zips in without this tape because it means that it can't move around right so i've peeled off the backing tape i'm going to get my zip and flip this over so the trick is you need equal amount of tab on each side you are going to have some hang hangover of the actual tab so we're gonna stick that into place and I'm matching up this edge of the zipper to the edge of the panel and then I'm going to run quilters tape along that edge there when I can find the end Okay, I'm going to peel off this backing tape, like so, and then I'm going to get that bottom pocket lining piece, this one here, I'm going to turn that so it's right side facing the actual koala, and it's um, the right side of this pointing to the wrong side of the zip, and I'm going to stick this into place. You can use a fabric glue, yeah, so um, anybody that does EPP, um, you can use one of these as well, so that's a sew line pen. What I tend to do is, if I'm using this though, if I glue it there, I'll get the iron and just press along it so it sets it into place. I just, I just swear by this stuff, I use this stuff all the time. Right, so using a zipper foot on your sewing machine, you're going to sew three eighths of an inch away from this edge along this edge here you're going to reverse your stitch at the start and at the end and you're going to make sure you reverse your stitch at the start and at the end when you're on the actual um, pocket pieces not the tab pieces so you're going to reverse your stitch here and here now if you just bear with me I've got to change my foot over to my zipper foot so. Right, so people always ask me why I have to open it up. I've got little chubby fingers. I can't get my hands in there to change it all over. So, yeah, that's why I have to open it up. I shouldn't technically have to open it up, but a lot of people apparently do it on this machine. Right, so my, my zipper foot has got a hole in the middle. That means it's not at the foot um, at the fully right side so I need to move my actual needle over so I'm going to move my needle over so it's right next to the edge of the zipper foot to the edge that's going to be closest to my zipper now I'm just going to open up that zip pull just a little And I'm going to change my sti stitch length down to a standard stitch length of 2.4 on my machine. There you go. And I'm reversing my stitch on that part that I told you to. Right, I'm making sure my needle is down. I'm going to open this up and pull that zipper pull back to the, where it originally was and then just carry on sewing the rest reverse your stitch on that part that I told you to
and then while I'm here because I don't need yeah no while I'm here I'm going to keep that on for a minute it's moving on to a section a bit too fast then okay so I'm going to press this now so it's open with my new iron I think all of us are going to end up getting one of these from sewing straight so I'm opening up the the lining first and give this a press okay and then I'm going to flip this so both the lining and the pocket um, outer front is in line so what I'm doing here is lining up the bottom first and the sides and then I'm going to push that down so it's nice and neat and then I'm going to give it a finger press before I actually finally press it and let's flip it over one more time and give it a bit of steam Okay, so we've got that part done so the next thing I'm gonna do is I'm not going to top stitch at the moment right so I'm not confident and I'm gonna admit it I'm not confident top stitcher with a zipper foot so I'm going to attach the top piece first and then take my zipper foot off and then basically top stitch it does say in the pattern to top stitch straight away but I'm going to move on to the next part and then obviously top stitch afterwards so this bit of overhang here we're going to trim it back ideally with a rotary cutter or and a quilting rule but unfortunately I've got no cutting mat on this so I'm just going to trim it back with a pair of scissors doing it with a rotary cutter and a um, quilters roll means that it's going to be accurate now I'm quite confident that's quite accurate right so along the top here we're going to run quilters tape make sure that's not fuzzy there you go if it does get fuzzy can you people let me know and then I'll just refocus thank you Right, so I've run quilters tape along this edge. I'm just run, running my finger along it, just to make sure it's finally stuck down. Peel off the backing tape. Okay, so I've got the top outer piece, and there's my flower, which is basically part of this leaf section here. I love those colours to go. I, I just love this panel um, I, I've been yeah wanting to use it for ages but unfortunately I've just not had anything to actually make it but now I'm making a bag for myself um, so yeah I've decided to use it so this has got interfacing on as you can see it's woven interface and fuse it fuse it is my own brand I'm going to flip this over and stick this into place and line up that edge yeah Laura's only got a few of these panels left so I'll grab them while you can okay and then I'm just going to flip this over and run quilters tape along this edge here on the wrong side of the zip Okay, so peel off that backing tape and then I'm going to get the lining piece 
with the interface and attached to it. So the right side of the line ends to the wrong side of the zipper and stick this into place. Okay, once again, I'm going to go with my um, zipper foot on my sewing machine, start sewing on here, reverse my stitch, stitch across, and then reverse my stitch, and I'm doing the 3 eighths of an inch seam allowance, and then um, I'm going to basically come back to my iron and press this up. So where is the sewing machine one? There it is. Right, standard stitch length. I'm going to open it up and move that zipper down just to start off with. Oops. I've got a stuck itch. This does happen on my machine for some reason. Okay. Right, so I'm going to pop my needle down, move that zip pull out the way, and then carry on sewing. And reverse my stitch. So now, and while I'm here, I'm just going to quickly change over to my walking foot. So I won't need this zipper foot now. and the claw right so my walking foot's got a little claw and it has to go into a little black box so it takes a bit of uh, to try and get it in but it does go in I think that's it yeah there it is And then I'm going to make sure my needle is back in the centre position. There you go. Right. Okay, so I'm going to open this up and press. And yes, you can press on top of a zipper. It's a nylon zipper, so it's fine. It's not gonna melt it. I always get asked this on sewing straight. And I'm gonna bring that over so it matches that one there. And press. It's a bit fiddly, but it will do it. So where is everybody from um, who's watching? I know there's 21 of you actually watching, so I know that's not a lot, but that's a lot for me. <laughs> I know likes of Emma has quite a lot of viewers um, when, they, when she goes live. Okay, so before I go anywhere, because this keeps wanting to flip around, I'm going to get some quilters clips and just clip along this edge here, just to stop it from moving around. And it means that you only have to top stitch it once and not unpick it. From Kent, nice area, I like Kent. I'm from Shropshire, if anybody wants to know. <laughs> I'm just going to do the same on the bottom as well. Okay, so I'm going to top stitch on both sides. I'm going to top stitch one eighth of an inch away on this edge here, and then one eighth of an inch away from this edge here. 
and I'm going to make sure my stitch length is an approximately round about one and a half, I mean um, three and a half mil. London, France but living in London. I bet London's busy at the moment with um, everything that's going on. Okay, so I'm going to move my zip pull out of the way to start off with. And I'm going to knock my stitch length up to a 3.5. And I'm not going to reverse my stitch because I've got to do a basting stitch around this and that will lock it into place anyway. Right, so my needle is down. Now, this can be a bit fiddly for me because I've got a wide walking foot. If you've got a thin walking foot, this won't be fiddly, but fingers crossed. Okay, and then I'm just going to do the other side. Twist it round for me because I've got a. I don't know if anybody else is like me. You've got a natural, actual, natural side which you like to top stitch on. I like to top stitch with the needle and the edge of where I'm top stitching to be pointing towards this way. I don't know why. I've always been like that. my zip pull out of the way again Oops. won't move there you go now I should practice what I preach is practice everything I should practice top stitching with my actual zipper foot on so I'm saying that now you should practice what you preach Rebecca <laughs> that's me telling myself off right okay I'm just gonna trim off the excess zip thread Bonnie Scotland Tamworth I used to snow um teach snowboarding in the snow dome there Love Tamworth. Oxfordshire. I like Oxfordshire. Right, okay. I'm just making sure this is perfectly neat and tidy. Right, so I've just got a label that I want to actually physically put on. I'm just going to pop that on here. Just about there. So, I'm just going to pop this on. I'm just going to quickly base stitch that, so... I'm base stitching it about one eighth of an inch away. Okay, so we're moving on to the actual binding of the top of the pocket now. So as I said, you've got your binding that has got no interfacing on. You would have um, brought the two long edges into the center on the wrong side, giving it a good press. And then you should have a nice little crease in the center. That's for when it folds over the top edge here. Okay, so we're gonna pop this on. So I'm opening it up and I'm popping it so it's right side to right side and clipping this along this edge here. Okay, so you've got a natural crease here where the, the first crease is next to this edge. We're going to sew in that crease now, all along. Reverse your stitch at the start and at the end. I'm going to do a stitch length 2.4. Do it 
doing that in that um, actual fold means when we fold this back it means that this will fold right on where that stitching is and that's what we actually need so using the standard stitch length for 2.4 but whatever your machine is starting here along that little ditch that's closest to this edge and reversing my stitch at the end uh, there you go so 2.4 I shouldn't have to move my zipper foot. I'm going to have to, just a little bit. Okay, and now we're going to add the slip pocket stuff to it. Right, okay, we're not closing this up yet. Right, so you should have two more pieces that you would have cut out with your back slip pocket. Two of the lining pieces are actually for the front slip pocket. So both of the lining pieces have got woven interfacing. That's my fuse it from my shop. And I'm going to pop those so it's wrong side to wrong side making sure the birds are going the right way okay okay and then I'm going to get this pocket piece that we've just attached the bind into I'm going to pop this on top so technically now we have four layers of fabric at the bottom and a bit more at the at the at the top Right, so I've got a little bit of an overhang. I'm going to have to trim that off in a minute. We're going to sew along approximately one eighth of an inch away from this stitch line here. Now, I don't mention this construction in here, but I find it helps the binding of doing um, this binding. So I basically tell you not to put the binding on. I tell you to put these two pieces, these two back pieces on first then I tell you to do the binding. I find if I actually do an extra row of stitches on top of the binding, it helps with the binding a lot and when I fold it over. So I'm gonna stitch one eighth of an inch away towards this edge here from that stitch line. I'm just gonna use the same standard stitch length as what I was using before. Make sure it's all nice and neat. Move that zipper pull. Right, so that overhang there I'm going to have to trim off if you've got a rotary cutter I will trim it off with a rotary cutter you're just trimming back the two lining pieces to the binding edge now you might not have this but I've got it because I know I've got a little bit of a shrinkage um, because I cut the panel a bit too small right okay so now I've done that I'm going to bring this over, flip this over, and I'm going to bring this binding over. Now, ideally, where this stitch line is, this binding should be going over this here. Let's turn this around so I can see. And I've just noticed some of my stitching isn't perfect on the back. Um, so I'm just going to have to quick look at my sewing machine. But while now I've folded that over, I'm going to top stitch about one eighth of an inch away from this binding 
folded edge here along this edge and what will happen is it will catch this back binding here now the trick is you definitely needed that folded edge to meet just over that stitch line that you just did now just bear with me I've just got to sort my machine out the thread isn't playing ball Just try that. I had this serviced a couple of weeks ago. Well, it's about a month ago now. Still doing it. I had it serviced and I'm not been happy with the service. So it is booked back in for the end of this month to go back and have it serviced. No, that is in there, isn't it? Hmm. It's the walking foot. Okay. It all happens to all of us, unfortunately. Now just do that walking foot while I'm here. I'm really sorry about this guys. It's not like I have a second machine now. My second machine is on my cutie frame, which I've got a quilt on there at the moment. Right, let's try that. Try one more time. Yep, that's better. I had the wrong plate on. Right, okay. The plate that I have for my zigzag has gone faulty. And that's the one that they've serviced for me. So I'm hoping that they can fix it for me. Right, so I'm going up to a stitch length 3.5 to 4, depending on what your best top stitching is. And you're going to sew one eighth of an inch away from the edge. Right, so that is top stitch. So the next thing we're going to do is get my main body piece. I'm going to pop this to one side. So I'm using motor grunge for my outer part. It just shows everyone can have issue with yeah um 
you know, you were on my retreat the other day. Um, unfortunately, I can't um, get booked in until at least the end of the month for them to actually have a look at it. I know what it is. I can definitely tell them where, what it is. It's a spring. Right, okay. So, I'm going to pop this on right sides, facing up. On the back of this, I've got interfacing on. Let's turn it this way. I've got it on my foam. There's no right and wrong um, way for this foam. Yeah, it's one of my favourite grunges, this is. It's one I stock, this is. Um, I can't remember which one it is. I'm gone. Just bear with me. Uh, it's the 389 one that's on my website. Right, so I'm just going to put some pins in this. Using a long stitch length of say a two point um, uh, a number five, if you've got number five, it might be a number four on your sewing machine. You're going to sew a quarter of an inch away from the edge, all the way around on the fabric piece. You're going to reverse your stitch at the start and at the end, and then we're going to trim back this foam. So I'm a quarter of an inch away, just drop my needle down and then knocking my stitch length up to a stitch length 5, which is a basting stitch. Reverse your stitch at the start and at the end. And I'm doing it a quarter of an inch all the way around, making sure my needle is down when I come to the corner. row and then make sure you definitely reverse your stitch at the end you've got to make sure you're definitely doing it a quarter of an inch all the way around as well because I your stitches will be seen when it comes to the um, when we add the binding on the main outer bag so I'm going to remove these where's Fred there's Fred hedgehog's called Fred by the way guys and then I'm going to get my scissors and I'm trimming this back to the edge of level with the edge of the fabric. love that noise I love scissors noise I don't know if anybody else is like me or weirdo <laughs> I just love that sound I just love the crunch so I'm not overly keen on rotary cutters because I grew up with no rotary cutter when I started when I was learning to sew when I was eight but I do use them but I just love the scissors noise Right, so you're going to just pop this to one side, which is your main outer front body piece. Now, in the pattern, I do say where it's got the handle part here, you've got two options. Now, option one is you can have some webbing, which is um, one and a half inches um, wide. And um, you can buy 88 inches long length of webbing and then you cut it into two which will make your handles or you can do the option that I'm going to do on the back so I've got some fabric I've done 44 inch wide so I've just gone from salvage to salvage on my actual um, on 
my actual uh, ba uh, fabric. Um, yeah, these fa these scissors, Joanne. Um, these scissors. So Joanne's asked me, um, do you use your non-fabric scissors on your phone? Yeah. So these are my go-to fabric, not my fabric scissors. These are my go-to scissors for anything other than fabric. Um, so if I'm using foam or um, or fusible fleece uh, interfacing, anything that's got a bit of a, um, a a thickness to it I will go to these now if I'm using fabric I've got my Millwall fabric um, shears that I use on those going back to the handle um, you can have the option of cutting some fabric so 44 inch wide fabric if it's not 44 and it's 43 it doesn't matter it just has to be um, between 42 to 44 inches wide from salvage to salvage and as you can see, I leave the salvage on just to give me that little bit of extra. So it's six inches wide and you need to interface it. So I've used, what yet again, woven interfacing. I've pressed it in half, like so. Then I've opened it up and brought the two long edges into that centre crease and given it a good press and then folded that over. Now you need to make two of these for both sides. When you actually come to top stitch, you always top, top stitch on the bit that's open, not the folded side. If you top stitch on the bit that's on the folded side first, you will find this could go crooked and you'll end up with ripples in your fabric. So go along and clip along this edge here. Yeah, on my, um, Joanne, on my... Um, on my lives you tend to only see me use the orange scissors you'll never see me use a pair of shears um, it's only because sometimes I forget that I need to cut a, like a piece of foam and I could grab my shears now my shears are actually in a special pot which has got my rotary cutter in as well so I just basically um, try my hardest not to actually bring those on to the lives however these are them so they're my they're my fabric scissors. So nice chunky ones and weighty ones. Okay, so I'm using the top stitch of four, stitch length number four. And like I say, I'm gonna sew on this edge first. I'm going to do one eighth of an inch away from this edge. From edge from salvage to salvage edge. From small edge to small edge and then I'm going to do the exactly same on this one I'm not going to reverse my stitch at the start and at the end because these are going to be locked at the bottom of the panel anyway right. stitch length number four just double check my stitches on this to make sure I'm happy yep okay so one eighth of an inch away from the edge if you are not confident stitcher or one eighth of an inch do it at a quarter of an inch it's totally up to you but I, I prefer one eighth I just like the look of the one eighth away Okay, so I've just done that one end, that one side, and I'm going to turn this around and do the opposite side, one eighth of an inch away, not reverse my stitch. And as you can see, I'm not even moving the fabric around. I'm pushing down my fingers about an inch away from the foot which means that it stays 
in the position that I need it to be one eighth of an inch away. I'm not guiding it or anything because it, the feed dogs are actually doing that for me. And the walking foot. I used to do paper craft and I use my Tim Holtz scissors for non-fabric these days. Yep, definitely. Um, definitely. Or even, or even sometimes if I can't find my paper scissors, use these for paper as well. Right, so I've top stitched along the edge of that. Now I'm going to get this body that I've attached the foam to. Let's move those out of the way. And I'm going to attach this to this. Right, so I like this folded edge to be in the centre. Now there's a reason for my method of madness. Is when you have the bag and it's standing up, you'll see it from this point of view. You'll see a nice neat folded edge. You don't really want to see where the, um, the two double folded edges are. So I always have the folded edge on this side and the two edges that meet together on this side. Right, using your quarters roll, you're going to measure in from the two long edges, one and a quarter inches. And then on this side of, so I've flipped this over. I'm going to run quilters tape, two rows of quilting tape. I'm going to go to around about here, so on the actual um, strap, on the actual handle. Now I'm, I'm wondering if I can zoom out a bit more. Yes, I can. Yay! Love technology. So I'm going just to pit past my 12 inch roll, rub that down, trim that off there. Same with that one. Okay. I like to run my fingers across it to make sure it's definitely stuck into place. Make sure that's definitely at one and a quarter inches away from that edge and peel off this backing tape. I'm going to flip this over and stick the bottom edge so it matches up. So that's just salvage, the salvage fray edge on the bottom. And then this side of the handle stick in right next to where this quilter's edge is and stick that down and then we're going to repeat the same on this side so flip this over one and a quarter inches make sure you've got a nice u-shape here before you flip this over so i'm going to flip this over that way and then stick my quilter's tape on Just going a bit past the 12 inch rule. Okay, peel off that back and tape. Just make sure my quarters roll is lined up neat. Flip this back, match up the bottom edge and the side of the handle next to the quarters roll and stick that down. Okay, so next thing you're going to do is, I just need to check this one measurement because I always get this one a bit mixed up. Uh, one and three quarters. 
Right, so with a marking tool, one that will disappear with heat or with um, whatever, um, you need to measure from this edge here, so that's the top of the bag, you need to measure down one and three quarters. So I'm just going to fold this so it nice lies flat. And what I'm going to do is just mark across on this handle there and there. That just that's where I know to stop sewing to and I need to sew across. Right, so where you have already top stitched on your handle, you're going to re-top stitch over that all the way up to that marking going across and then back down on that row of stitches there as well and you're going to do that on both handles that's all right no one's late you can re-watch this back at any time i don't know if you can rewind it back at the present moment i might not have set it right but <laughs> me and t computer technology are not the best i can set up a computer i can build a computer but when it comes to lights of new modern technology nope not that good so i'm top stitching along that top stitch that i've already done and then i'm going to come to a stop where that drawn line is make sure my needle is down and pivot round sew across to that on that drawn line and next to that sew line that, that sewing line that you've already done that top stitch line and then go back down okay and then I'm just going to do that one more time on the other handle So I've done a nice top stitch to those areas there. Just going to turn my iron on, get it warmed up a bit. Right, so the next thing you're going to do is grab your front pocket. You're going to line that up at the bottom. Okay, but the first thing I do is fold this down and align up my quilt with the edge of the top panel and make sure this is actually perfectly neat and straight so it doesn't matter where it sits at what height if you want to make these pockets bigger longer you can do um, I'm just um, making sure that it's nice and level before I start pinning or clipping it into place so that's nice and neat so I'm just gonna Put some clips in. I'm making sure my edges match up at the bottom as well. I'm going to bring my zipper pull into the centre. Okay, I'm just going to flip it over just to make sure I haven't got any rolled over bits, which I have got, and I just don't want that because it means that it's going to get in the seams and it's going to be super bulky in those areas. So, just before I go any further, I'm just going to get rid of those two markings because I've used a heat eraser pen friction pens just to get rid of those okay 
Right, so using the long stitch length of a stitch length 5 in 5mm, uh, I'm going to do a base stitch along these three edges. I'm going to reverse my stitch at starting at the end. I'm going to do it around about 1 eighth to, three, um, to a quarter of an inch away. It really doesn't matter as long as you don't go past the quarter inch because obviously your binding will not cover that quarter of an inch. So I'm going to do base stitch along these three edges here. And I can get the camera off. There you go. So this is where you definitely need a walking foot on. Because it is quite bulky now. So next week you'll find that I have a larger needle on my sewing machine. I'll move up to a size um, 16 needle for next week. So that's a 1600 uh, 500. So I'm just going to pop this to one side. So the next thing I'm going to do is work out if I personally want to do the um, that. Oh no, wrong camera. See this is why I need Michael. <laughs> Michael's my husband, guys. <laughs> um, right. So I've top stitched, I've base stitched all the way around, and now I'm just going to pop this to one side. Okay, so you need to work out whether you want to do this this actual part of the bag. Um, let me zoom in. There you go. So this little part, pocket here actually detaches away from the actual bag. And it actually physically sits in the actual um, bag on this side. Um, so this is the actual, um, the actual uh, main body piece. Out of front main body piece. Where is it? Right, so it would normally sit on this side of the bag. So the bag opens up like this and you've got two single pockets. Now the ideal parts of the single pockets are for you to keep individual projects in. So for instance, if you're doing an EPP project, you will keep an EPP project in one and then in the other one you will keep, um, I don't know, um, a bag, a hand sewing project that you might be working on or something. Now, if you're not going to want to make this section here and you're going to skip that part of the bag and just move on to the all the other pages, you don't need to have the, um, the Velcro for this next step. However, I'm going to have one inside this bag because this is going to come my art bag. Um, so I can take my art down to my parents when I'm looking after my mum. I always take my sketch pad or my iPad with me um, while she's sleeping and when my dad's out. So I basically um, want to take this bag with me once it's completed with my art supplies in. So I personally only need one of those um, little inside slip uh, single page pockets. So on the front of the bag, I'm going to add the Velcro. But when I come to the construction of the back panel, I'm not going to add this Velcro in. And I'll show you that in a bit. Right, so I've got my main body lining piece and I've got the interface in. I'm going to get my two five inch pieces of Velcro. And I'm just gonna separate the the soft and the hard side so that's the hook side and the loop side now it's not velcro that i'm using i'm using um, hook and loop or loop or hook or whatever it's called from my actual shop um for this instance we need the um the two harder pieces so we're going to keep the soft ones and you need to keep these safe 
until week three. So Rebecca, that's a warning to you. Do not lose these two pieces. <laughs> right, so I'm just gonna pop a clip onto those. So those two soft pieces or those four soft pieces, depending on how many pockets you want to add, um, you need to pop to one side to week three. We're just going to be working with the the heavier, harder pieces, the, the nasty feel ones. Right, okay, so with your quarters roll, let me just make sure I've got the measurements right. <laughs> right, yeah. With your quarters roll, get a marking pen. Now, because this is a dark background, I will not use this marking tool. I'm going to use a piece, um, some chalk. So you might not actually see this marking that I'm doing now. But from the sh short edge, the first short edge, you're measuring in two and a half inches and drawing a line. You can faintly see that. You can see that. And then from the top edge, <coughs> You're going to measure down, excuse me, it's coughing there. You're going to measure down two and a half inches again. And you're going to draw just the line across that line there. So you should have like a little marking like that. You're going to repeat the same process for this side. Let's zoom out a bit. So that's two and a half inches. Okay. And then two and a half inches from the top. Yeah, I'll turn it off. I'm gone. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> right, okay, so this velcro with this hook and loop the hook side hasn't got a sticky side to it now if you've brought the ones that have got stickiness to it my advice is do not use it on your sewing machine because that glue is not sewing machine friendly i tend to use either beacon tack or um, some fabric glue or some wash away tape to stick these into place so i've got the non-sticky one i'm just going to run some quilters tape on the wrong side Yeah, um, there's a prim one. I think I actually got these pink in pink as well on my shop. Um, I'm actually not, we haven't actually done our um, inventory this month because I've been so busy, but um, that's this weekend's job. So yeah, I do normally stock them, but whether I've got them in stock is another question. They will show, if they're in stock, they'll show on the website. If you have not got this pattern and you're viewing it for the first time and want this pattern or anything out the shop there is 15% off at the moment um, each week will be a brand new code um, so this week's code is keep 15 so that's K E E P 15 at RJF um, rjfmakes.com and that will get you 15% off. Now that's 15% off everything apart from two things. That's Fred Gang, joining up to Fred's Gang, which is my online sewing school, or um, the e-gift cards. Right, so I've peeled off my backing tape. And then I'm just sticking that where that line is drawn across there and going down. And I'm sticking it right next to it so it's in that little T area that 15 percent is expires on the 20th i think that's right princess isn't it um on the 20th and um basically there'll be a brand new code for next week or a new offer okay so once again doing it on this side so this is how you detach or 
position the single page into um, the actual bag so on the single page on the other side will be this part of the velcro and then that will stick into position on these right so using a stitch length number three I'm going to sew across and do a full rectangle round and reverse my stitch at the start and at the end make sure you definitely reverse your stitch at the start at the end because if you don't reverse your stitch this can come off when you're pulling out that piece of um, that single page mm -mm -mm. okay standard stitch length or stitch length number three I'm doing a stitch length number three on this machine because it this walking foot doesn't really like going over the the hook part so I'm doing a number three so it rides better okay so my needles down pivot across And then reverse your stitch at the end. Just trim that off a bit. Okay, and do this one. I just went slightly a bit too over so I'm just reversing back onto the actual hook. Okay, and make sure I've got the camera on. Right, okay, so I've got those attached. Um, this will rub away. So the markings that I went over by, it just rubs away. So I'm just going to get rid of those. There you go. Right, so the next thing I'm going to do is grab my outer front, the one that I've assembled the bag to, I uh, mean the pocket to, and I'm going to pop this onto the, the side that's got no fabric on at the moment. Yes, we've got handles there, we're going to deal with that in a minute. I'm going to pop this on, doesn't matter which way. If you've got um, some fabric that's one directional and it's pointing that way, um, just make sure you've got the, the images pointing towards the top. Or you might not want to. I'm just giving you a suggestion. Okay, so I've lined that up. Get my clips. That's fine. Um, Joanne, you'll be able to watch this back. And thank you ever so much for joining us. Okay, twist that round. Okay, and then just clip in the two short ends. Okay, so make sure you've got no fabric curled up on this part, and then you're going to flip it over, double check this side. I've just got a few kinks in my pocket, so I'm just going to get rid of those. I like my pocket to be nice and flat. Okay, so this handle here, stuff it up inside that pocket, that slip pocket. So it's nice and out that way there you go 
Right, so stitching from this side of the bag, we're going to baste stitch that back piece into place, so this piece here. So where we've stitched previously on this marking here, you're going to go all the way around using a stitch length number five and reverse your stitch at the start and at the end. So I'm going up to stitch length number five. And just release those handles out that handle out okay so we're just going to pop this to one side and move on to the back panel right so the back panel is basically this thanks princess <laughs> right so the back panel is um, generally the same construction where you've got the main outer you've got your um, uh, handle I've sewn across I've attached that um, and on the back I've attached my lining now if you are doing a lining with the velcro you would have attached the velcro to this lining as well so go ahead and do that the back pocket now this is optional personally like sort of here on the front pocket and I don't say you can, you might need an extra zipper but you can actually do this zip pocket on the back as well if you want to however I've just gone ahead and done a slip pocket now the slip pocket is two pieces wrong sides together so that's my main outer front piece my main lining piece of the um, uh, slip pocket wrong sides together and I've base stitched all the way around and I've got raw edges on all four sides then I've attached my binding and I've done the binding exactly how I did it before. I sewed the binding on wrong sides together with the four, uh, with the three creases. Sewed in the first crease and then I did a second row of stitches one eighth of an inch away just to stop it from rolling when you actually flip it over and you fold it over and give it a good crease uh, press. And then I've top stitched one eighth of an inch along. So let me zoom in. Oh, no, no, no. <laughs> so I have top stitched one eighth of an inch away on the right side here. And then basically what's happened is it's caught it right there. So honestly um it's up to you how you construct the back um slip pocket it's totally up to you let me zoom out a bit now right so it's totally up to you on how you actually do the um back i personally just want it so i can put my art pad in when i'm going to and from my parents so i'm going to grab my back panel and like before pop it on the bottom edge first make sure this is lined up and this is where I like to line it up next to my front panel so my bottom edge is there and I like to make sure my binding is exactly the same height now if this binding was too big I will personally drag it down to match this lining now you won't these don't 
these are not constructed together so we don't sew them together so they're like this um i basically um have a gusset in between um a bag gusset now the bag gusset doesn't basically um it hides the fact if these are not in line but um i personally like to make sure they're in line and they're nice and neat so that's nice and neat so i'm just making sure i've got this pocket straight before i go any further so okay and then i'm just going to clip down these sides oh you're welcome hi welcome to the channel right so i'm just clipping this into place There's not much more left for this week anyway. And next week we will carry on with the construction of the bag. Okay, so I'm going to base stitch around these three sides and then that's my back outer slip pocket constructed. But before I go any further, I'm going to add my maker's label to the side but these are quite big so I have to overhang them slightly just so they're nice and neat okay it's on the wrong side it's because I'm doing it upside down for me it's this side that's it right okay so I'm just going to base stitch along this edge here using a stitch length number five reversing my stitch at the start and at the end just going over that label and reverse my stitch on that binding area okay so let me zoom out a bit more no that's the wrong one there you go so i now have my front and back construction i've just got a little bit of overhang on this so i'm just going to trim that back not that much okay I'm gonna keep my zip pull there because when we come to bringing the bag together with the gusset you don't want that zip pull getting caught up into your seam so that's basically near enough complete we've just got a few more steps now personally I can't go ahead and do this next step because I haven't got the particular sewing machine that I would use but as you can see on um, this back outer panel, I've zigzag stitched all the way around. You need to do that for this one here as well. So you need to do that for the front and the back. Now the zigzag stitching, what happens is, is it squashes this down. Let me focus again. Okay. It squashes this down here. So it means that it's nice and thin for when we come to construct the whole bag together and when we sew the binding on. So you definitely need to go ahead and zigzag stitch around both pieces. There you go. Around both pieces. And it just means that you will have um, a better ride when it comes to doing your binding. Now, unfortunately, because my zigzag plate on my sewing machine is playing up i will have to take this over to my other sewing machine and zigzag this but unfortunately the sewing machine isn't here it's at my parents house at the moment so my mom's been using it so with my dad's supervision <laughs> right so the next thing you're going to do is the last thing is to round off these corners so you've got your templates you're going to use template one 
this one here and we're just going to round off the corners you can overlock yeah my overlocker is over there Sharon so I can actually overlock um I have done it actually I did it on the um, Applebrook bag um Sharon you're from um, Fred's gang so I did it on the Applebrook bag um when I was actually making the bag uh pattern itself so yeah you can do it right so I've got the writing wrong side down so it's pointing down and I'm going to just clip this into place and I'm matching up this edge here and this edge here to the template then I'm just going to get a pen by the way I'm going to teach you something now about a friction pen I don't know if anybody else has done this I'm, I think I'm late to the party did you know you can buy refills for these friction pens see this bit here that's a refill <laughs> thanks to one of my admin members Lynn has taught me that you can buy refills rather than buying the whole pen over and over again. I didn't know this <laughs> up until a couple of weeks ago. I'm still I'm still a bit in shock over that. Right, okay, so I'm going to get my marking tool and just draw around that curved edge. I'm sorry if you didn't need to know that and you already knew that, but I'm still a one I might be late to the party of that one. Right, so I've drawn around that. I'm just going to flip this over, making sure my writing's still upside down. Match up the edges. And draw around this edge here. Okay, and then going to do the bottom now the bottom will be the right and facing up and it's not the wrong way around obviously this pen won't be seen on this so I'm just going to use this pen chalk pen matching up the edges okay and then flip this over and do the other side now I always clip it into place because it's bound to move if I don't clip it and it means that the corner won't be a, a pot, uh, an actual corner. Yeah, um, I didn't know either. I've, <laughs> I've, I've just done a Fred's Gang retreat for tier three and when I got told that I was just like in shock all weekend. So yeah. Okay, so you repeat the same process for your front as well. I'll do that off camera so it's ready for next weekend, uh, next week. And then I'm just going to trim right on that drawn line on all four corners. Now, as you can see, we've cut off some of the zigzag in stitch that we would have done. So you will need to go back and zigzag around that, around all four corners on both panels. It just means that it's nice and thin in that area, ready for that binding and when we sew the bag together. Okay, so you would repeat the same process for this one as well. So you've got your nice rounded corners. And then zigzag stitch on all four on all eight corners and then that is it for today let me go back to the front view so yeah so if you do that then you've caught up with me on um the sew along yeah i love this panel don't you think it's so cute yeah so honestly laura good choice right so thanks ever so much for joining me um next week i'm going to be starting at two o'clock it's just today we had the builders in and as you can see this has taken us one hour and 40 minutes if i was to do this bag from start to finish it will take we will be here hours we will be here at least seven or eight hours so honestly breaking it up will be easier for you guys to keep along you won't get frustrated with it 
and it just means that it's an easier sew and a more peaceful sew. Right, so if you've liked this content um, and you want to learn more about bag making or general sewing or quilting, I actually um, manage a club called Fred's Gang. Now Fred's Gang has three tiers. Tier one is all digital content, so you get a weekly video like this, um, a weekly live over on Facebook. You get all the patterns I ever release to general public is in there with either a sew along. Um, yeah, so there is that. Tier two is every three months you'll get everything in that digital footage, um, you get all the digital contents. Tier two, you'll also get every three months a, um, a little sub box. Now the sub box is, um, can have bag hardware in, um, tools, um, bits and pieces for a, either an up and coming pattern or it can be a pattern or it could be going into your stock. Now the next tier is tier three. Now tier three, you get quite a lot. So in that goodie box that you get every three months, you will get a meter of fabric. So that's either a full meter or two half meters or um, half meter and two fat quarters. You'll get extra bits in there, like extra thread. <laughs> I can't say that word. You'll get extra thread. Um, and you'll also get at the end of the year which we've just had is a, a zoom retreat and I teach you an exclusive pattern so that pattern stays exclusive for um, eight weeks but then they're the only ones that get the videos no one else gets the videos not even the other Fred gangers get the videos they just get that video when it goes to general republic it's one of the patterns that will never get a video so yeah there is so much in that group you get offers you get weekly offers you get monthly offers you get um anything i do online classes for quilting so if there's any online classes coming up they get first dibs on spaces yeah so if you are interested and like the way I teach, please do come along onto Fred's Gang. There is a three months, um, so you're in for three months. And then if you're not liking it after the third month, you can leave. So yeah. <laughs> right, so thanks ever so much for watching. Um, the pattern, Princess has been dropping the link, but I'm going to, once this live is finished, drop it into the description. If you are watching this after the live, Thanks ever so much if you got all this way and I'll see you all next week. Have a lovely day and I'll see you all soon.